so hot. Cat tries to beg! Hey there, you're watching Cat Tries to Bake. I'm Cat, and today we're gonna be baking pineapple shortcakes in honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Month. I originally wanted to do a recipe from a different Asian country every week of May, but as you probably know from watching this, it's already the second week of May, and this is my first Cat Tries to Bake video in May. I was really busy the first week of May finishing up my graduate portfolio, so I missed the first week. So I don't know, maybe I'll do like... She got the bread in the mouth! Pancake just took the bread out of Alex's takeout. As I was saying, since it's already the second week of May and I still kind of want to do this idea, maybe I'll do like two video uploads in an upcoming week or like keep doing it into June. I don't know, it's my channel, I can do whatever I want. So usually Cat Tries to Bake videos involve me trying a recipe for the very first time, but this actually is not going to be my first time trying this recipe. The reason for that is because I actually filmed a whole Cat Tries to Bake video where I really am trying this recipe for the first time, but then I looked at the footage afterwards on my computer and I realized I wasn't focused for any of it. This is what happens when you try to film everything by yourself. That being said, my brother Alex is back from college! Say hello! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so hopefully this video will come out a lot better than the footage that I shot by myself because I have a whole other person helping me. So I decided to start with pineapple shortcakes or feng li su because my parents are both from Taiwan. Pineapple shortcakes always remind me of my family, my family in Taiwan, and my childhood in Taiwan and night markets and everything. So I thought it would be the perfect first recipe to try for the month of May. This recipe is from Angel Wong. Her website is called Angel Wong's Kitchen. So thank you, Angel for this recipe. Let's get started. The first... You try to do this, it's hard. The first steps. <laughs> the first step involves draining a 20 ounce can of crushed pineapple. So in the video, Angel uses like a, a sifter thing, a sieve, but I have this nut milk bag. To be specific, it's Ellie's Best Bigger but Bigger, Bigger, Better, <laughs> Bigger Butter. <laughs> bigger Butt. <laughs> Ellie's best bigger, better nut milk bag. <laughs> From making this recipe before, I know that there tends to just be a lot of liquid still, even after I've like double strained it with not this. So I'm gonna try for the first time today straining it with this and seeing like how much water or how much pineapple juice is still left. I'll just like pour all this in and then squeeze it out. Let's see how this goes. Oh, okay, it's working. And I'm just gonna gently squeeze like as much juice out as possible. There's so much pineapple juice. So I just squeezed out as much juice as possible. There still is a little bit left, but I think I will just empty this out into this bowl and then maybe just like hand strain the rest. That's pretty good. It looks like really dried out, which is kind of what I wanted. Now that my crushed pineapple is strained of as much juice as possible, I'm gonna put this in a medium saucepan overheat. I finally have a portable burner, so I don't have to go all the way over there to the stove to show you. This is a pretty small saucepan, but from doing it before, I know that this is actually okay. So, in this goes. In addition to the crushed pineapple, to make the filling, I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sugar, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of lemon juice. The instructions say cane sugar and light brown sugar, but I had just regular sugar and dark brown sugar. I know it's still gonna taste good, so I'm just using what I have. I'm just gonna cook and stir this for about 10 minutes until the pineapples are soft. And I still have all of this pineapple juice left over. So if I feel like it ends up looking too dry, I'll just add it in maybe like a teaspoon or half a teaspoon at a time. I've been mixing this pineapple filling for several minutes now, and it's really coming together and looking like filling. I haven't needed to add any more of that extra pineapple juice because it started out looking dry and then now it's actually looking really moist. So I'm gonna take this off of heat. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for maybe half an hour or an hour, however long it's gonna take for this to cool off. And in the meantime, I'm gonna make my shortcake mixture. We are gonna start with a cup and a quarter cup, a, a cup and a quarter, yeah, a cup and a quarter of cake flour. Wait, no. I don't know why I did that. You have to start with the butter first. I'm gonna scoop all this back out. Cat tries to bake! I'm a mess! 
We are gonna start, actually start with one stick of unsalted butter and a quarter cup of powdered sugar. Okay, this is room temperature. And we're just gonna mix it with the paddle attachment until it's all creamed together. Now that my stick of unsalted butter and quarter cup of powdered sugar are all creamed together, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. Salt, a little bit more than that. It said a pinch or two, so this is two pinches. I'm gonna pull a Rachel Ray! That wasn't very effective because my hands are slightly wet, so a lot of the salt just stuck to my hand. Why did Rachel Ray do that? Well, good luck! I messed up. What happened? <laughs> You're right, I should have labeled it! I mixed the, sh the, uh, the butter with the baking powder. This is the powdered sugar. I was wondering why it didn't look the same as last time. Slightly different order! But hopefully, it will still turn out the same. See, this didn't need to be my first time making this for me to make mistakes. Okay, I'm gonna add my powdered sugar. That was a teaspoon of baking powder. And then this is a quarter cup of powdered sugar. Wait, then what's this? Oh, this is the cake flour. I didn't put this in. I put this in first. Okay. And then, it, no, no, I put this in first and it was wrong, so I took it back out. Everything's fine. So what I did wrong was I put in a stick of butter and a teaspoon of baking powder, but I should have done the, the butter and the powdered sugar. Now in this step, I should have added the baking powder. This is a quarter cup of dry milk and then one egg, which I think I'm actually gonna crack in here first, just in case there are any pieces of eggshell that fall in. And then I'm gonna put it in. There are a couple tiny pieces, so I'll just scoop them out. This is real! This is me! <laughs> Alex wanted me to label each of my dry ingredients by drawing <laughs> the first letter of each ingredient in with my finger. <laughs> it would have worked. No, because I, I tried it and the indentations were actually still in it and it didn't work. So, so much for your great idea, Alex. Then an egg. And now we are gonna cream all of those together. This is going swimmingly. All of that is combined pretty well now, so now I'm going to add my one and a quarter cup of cake flour just a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna add a little, mix until it's combined, and then add more until it's all done. All of my shortbread ingredients have been thoroughly combined, so now I'm gonna scoop all this out onto a lightly floured uh, cutting board and I'm gonna start forming the shortbread. Sticking to my fingers. Sticking to my fingers all the time. Wait, where is that from? It's an ABBA song, it was in Mamma Mia. Oh, right. But it's all over TikTok right now. Yeah. And I don't know why. Isn't it so weird that TikTok trends, like, so many of them come from, like, old, old random songs. songs. Like, that Talking to the Moon one, yeah. I listened to that song, I listened to the demo version of that song when I was in, like, 7th or 8th grade, which <laughs> is several years ago. Who would have thought that that song would make a comeback on TikTok and somebody would remix it into, like, I want you back. I have finished scooping out all of my shortbread dough and I'm gonna split it into three equal parts and then roll those parts out into logs. I will use my handy dandy scale for this and just sort of guesstimate first and like adjust. Oh wait, I should measure how much the whole thing is first. <laughs> Math! Quick, 340 divided by 3. That's a hundred, a hundred, about 113, right? Actually, I'm not gonna roll them into logs first. I'm gonna split these now into another three equal sections each. What's 113 divided by three? It's about- 44. 44? Yeah, it's about 44. So 44 each. 44 grams each. Units are important. No, it's not. It's not right. 44. <laughs> Wait, okay. What I say 113? 113, oh. so that's 30. It's 37. 30, 38. 37 or 38. Yeah. This is from a certified EMT, Sorry. everybody. <laughs> it's the paramedics that have to do the math, bro. I am going to roll them. Did it just get darker? Maybe like the batteries are running out. I just got these yeah. new LED lights and I think they're starting to die. So this is perfect timing actually because I'm gonna roll these out, but I think that my pineapple filling still needs to cool. So while it's cooling, I will walk my dogs 
Alex will skateboard and I will recharge my LED batteries. I looked into the light too long, so now I see spots everywhere. Anyway, I'm gonna roll these out. Um, I'm just sort of going to roll them into little balls and then flatten them so that I think they should be about three inches in diameter. Just very professionally doing this. Yeah, about this big. That's not too bad. I'm gonna do this and then I'll see you back here when it's time to actually put the pineapple filling in. We just got back from being outside. My dogs are outside enjoying their Kong toys and I am finally going to put my cooled pineapple filling into each of these little shortbread things. Circles, shortbread circles. So I'm just gonna fill the center. I've made the mistake both times I've made this before of filling it too much and then the shortbread cracks so I'm really gonna try my best not to do that. By the way I just preheated my oven to 330 degrees so that is heating up right now. Hopefully that's enough. Let me see. Yeah that's good. And I'm just gonna close it in. Okay it's starting to crack. Angel Wong in her video was able to make these really pretty like well sealed balls and I haven't been able to do that a single time. Maybe today's the day. That's actually, that's not bad. Oh, it's cracking. Angel also has these nice square cookie cutters and I didn't buy them just because I wasn't sure how often I would make these and when else I would really need square cookie cutters. So I've just been like eyeballing a cube and it does expand in the oven but it's not bad. I think it's just not the prettiest. There's my first little pineapple shortcake cube-like thing, and I'm just gonna do exactly that for the other eight circles. I just finished forming all nine of my little pineapple shortcake cubes. They are kind of ugly. There are some cracks in them, but I also think these are probably the prettiest ones I've made so far. So my oven has finished preheating to 330 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna put these onto my baking sheet with parchment paper. These are going to expand slightly in the oven so if you are following along with this video, make sure you place all of the little cakes sort of distance from each other. I'm gonna pop these into the oven for 10 minutes and I'll be right back. A few minutes later. I just baked these in the oven for 10 minutes. They already all expanded a little bit and they are a little bit more misshapen than before, but it's fine. I'm gonna use my tongs to flip them over and then I'm gonna keep baking them back in the oven at 330 degrees for another seven minutes. Into the oven they go. See you in seven minutes. I just finished baking them for another seven minutes. They almost all have cracks in them. That is just me being bad at like shaping these. They taste good and they are a really nice shade of golden brown. I definitely need to work on presentation. I'm flipping them all back over so that all the cracks are on the bottom because the tops look nice. Now I already know that they're gonna taste good because again, I've made this recipe a couple times, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna cut one open and try it with Alex. And then the rest of them, I'm gonna give to my mom and my grandma for Mother's Day, which is this Sunday. Okay. <gasps> Did you see? This one got darker. <laughs> I am going to take the ugliest one out of the bunch and cut it open and we're gonna taste it. That's ugly, all right. I'm gonna cut it open and we'll take a look at the inside. So I just cut it open and they're really nice and full of that pineapple filling on the inside. And Alex and I are each gonna try a half of this. Oh, I'm back, shuddy. You said hi earlier. Anyways. That one has more filling, so you have that one. So generous. It's very warm. We got a, there we Gambe. go. Gambe. Gambe. Mm, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> oh, it's good though. Ah! Oh, it's hot. Bro, that's on my foot. It's so hot, but it's really good. Okay, describe it for us. I'm gonna go with the texture first. You got the crumble of the shortcake. You got the si -si de <laughs> of the of the pineapple, and then combined with the sweetness, slight tartness of the uh, filling, 
Makes for an exceptional experience. <laughs> Didn't ask for all that. <laughs> I guess that's it for this episode of Cat Tries to Bake. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks for watching. And subscribe and like this video and share it with all your friends and family. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Yay, bless you. Oh. Thanks for helping me. That one hurt.